Hello, welcome to your physics teacher, Mr. Fernando. So here I am trying to recap what we did last time. So we tried to introduce what energy is, and we said energy is the ability to do work. That didn't really help us. Then we tried to define what is work. Well, work is just the transfer of energy. And this means that both definitions depend on each other, so it's not so clear, and therefore we put it in a box, and we don't think about it much. Then we went on to introduce the formula to calculate work. So work is force dot displacement. Now, there are two ways to calculate it, but in this course, we only need to focus on geometrical way. So to calculate geometrically, we calculate it as the magnitude of the force, magnitude of the displacement times cosine of the angle form when the two are joined tail to tail. So a quick example was to look at a dog that we're trying to make this doggy walk. So it's resisting our change of motion. So in this case, we need to apply a force along this direction and sometimes you're dragging the doggy, right? So once you're trying to calculate how much energy you transfer in trying to make the doggy move, remember, we need to calculate work by joining the two vectors tail to tail. So that's what we did here. We have the force vector and the displacement vector joined tail to tail. Now we're gonna go and look at other real world examples and try to see the different cases that can happen for work, which again is the transfer of energy. All right, so now let's look at a real world example of calculating the work done. So we're going to try to suppose we have some kind of grassy area, some prime grass. So grass is trying to make you think about something rough. So in this case, we are going to have friction. And we're going to have an ant, let's draw an ant. And this ant is pushing along a tomato. Now why it is doing that, we don't know, but let's try to see what it is actually trying to do here. Okay, so let's calculate the work done in having an ant push along a tomato along grass. So we need to identify what are the forces acting on the tomato. So this goes back to the second unit that we studied. So what we learned from the second unit is we always have the force of gravity, as long as we're on Earth and there's a mass, acting on the tomato. So the force of gravity. And because the tomato is on a surface, we have the normal force. And the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. And because the ant is pushing along the tomato, there's some kind of applied force acting on it. So the applied force will be directly to the right. So F applied. And also, we did assume that it was a rough surface. And what is that trying to tell us? that in this case there's going to be friction. So we have the friction force trying to oppose the direction of motion. So F, kinetic friction. And again, in this case it's kinetic because the tomato is constantly making contact with the surface as it is moving along. All right, so once we finish identifying the forces, we need to think about this tomato having been pushed. So this is the initial position. Initial. And when you're trying to solve questions in this unit, it's gonna be very helpful to try to identify, hey, what is going on initially? And what are the conditions at the final phase that you're interested in, so final. So in this case, we're still assuming that the tomato is being pushed along with the ant. So the final conditions look very similar to our initial conditions, but let's try to draw so we can visualize them. Okay, so again, key point in this unit, you have to make sure that you consider the initial conditions and the final conditions and tie it back to the second unit so we looked at all the forces acting on it. All right, so now we're ready to calculate the work. And what was work? The transfer of energy. And the formula we use is the dot product of the force vector with the displacement vector. In that, 
gave us the geometrical definition, which is the magnitude of the force, the magnitude of displacement, times cosine of the angle form when the two are joined tail to tail. Hmm. But here we kind of left something out. We didn't recognize the displacement, but that's where recognizing the initial and final conditions help out. So if we think about that, in what direction did the displacement of the object take place? Towards the right. So the displacement vector is to the right. This is going to be helpful because when we want to calculate work, we need to imagine drawing the two vectors joined tail to tail, as I mentioned before. So there are four forces. Each force, we're going to calculate the work done individually. So let's calculate the work done for the, by the force of gravity. Right, so this is the general formula. Now we can apply that formula for each individual force that we have in this example here. So the force of gravity times the displacement and cosine of the angle when the two are joined tail to tail. Well, look at the force of gravity. It's pointing directly downwards and the displacement to the right. So a quick way to draw this to help you visualize it is just connecting tail to tail, force of gravity was down, and the displacement was to the right. So what is the angle form in this case? 90 degrees. So let's put this into our formula. Force of gravity times displacement, cosine of the angle form when they're joined tail to tail, which is 90 degrees. Hmm. This does require you to use your calculator or unless you have a good memory and remember the special triangle ratios. So cosine of 90 is actually equal to zero. So cosine of 90 is zero. So that means that whatever this was, if we multiply by zero, it's going to give us zero. So the work done by the force of gravity in this case is going to equal to zero. So work was transfer of energy. So how much energy is transferred? Zero amount of energy by the force of gravity. But we have to repeat the same thing, but now we have to do it for the other forces. All right, so in this case, I'm going to go a little bit faster, but you should be able to follow the same procedure here that we did. So let's calculate the next work done by the normal force. How do we calculate the work done? We take the magnitude of the normal force times displacement, cosine of the angle form when they're joined tail to tail. So a good strategy to use is to make sure that you make a quick drawing and you attach them tail to tail. So the normal force pointing up and the displacement is to the right So what is the angle between these two vectors? Once again, they're 90 degrees to each other. So when we put it back into the equation, you can have a similar situation as before. What is cosine of 90? Again, put it into your calculator if you don't remember, but cosine of 90 is going to be zero. And anything multiplied by zero is gonna get you back zero. So this is very strange. So we're trying to calculate how much energy is transferred. Well, by this force, zero joules. And by the normal force, zero joules. But surely this ant must be doing some work, right? Because it's not so easy to push a tomato, especially for an ant. So it's not so easy. So there must have been some energy transfer. So that's why we need to consider the other two forces. So uh, here, let me just quickly erase so that way you could see it. Okay, so what do we have so far? We calculated the work done by the force of gravity. Zero joules. Because the two vectors were perpendicular to each other. Likewise, when we calculated the work done by the normal force, that was also zero joules. But again, it must require some amount of energy because the ant, it's not so easy to push a tomato, right? So now we're gonna calculate the work done by the other two forces, 
as the ant pushed the tomato from its initial position to its final position, so long as displacement delta d. All right, so let's calculate the work done by the applied force. The same formula as before, we take the magnitude of the applied force times the displacement and cosine of the angle that joins the applied force with the displacement. So it's not so obvious, it's a good idea to try to quickly visualize it by drawing it. So the applied force is to the right. F apply. And again, theta represents the vectors when they are joined tail to tail. So we need to connect the displacement vector tail to tail to the apply force. So notice that in this case, the two of them are actually pointing in the exact same direction. They're both pointing to the right. So what is the angle between the two of them? Well, zero. They're both pointing in the same direction. So we can replace our formula the magnitude of the applied force, magnitude of displacement, cosine of zero degrees. Again, don't be afraid to use your calculator if you're unsure what cosine of zero is, but if you're so clever, you will have known that cosine of zero is actually equal to one. Try it out, put it into your calculator. So we can simplify our equation to be the magnitude of the applied force, times displacement. So notice in the previous cases we had zero joules of work done. So that means there was no energy transferred by these two forces. But by the applied force, this quantity has to be positive because the magnitude is always a positive quantity. The displacement is always a positive quantity. So this has to be a number that is greater than zero, so it is a positive quantity. So in other words, the applied force had to have transferred some energy to the tomato in order to get it to move to its final position. Now, I'm gonna give you a better discussion about positive work and negative work, but in order to do that, I need to show you the other example here for what was the work done by the frictional force. So let's do one last calculation. The work done by friction. So the work done by the frictional force, again, the same formula, the magnitude of friction, magnitude of displacement, cosine of the angle form when they're joined tail to tail. Quickly try to draw it out so that way you can visualize it. Uh, the frictional force is to the left, right? Frictional force to the left. And the displacement is directly to the Right, so we need to connect them tail to tail. So what do you notice there? These two, how many degrees apart are they? 180 degrees. So this formula, you need to consider the angle form when they are joined tail to tail, but since they're going in opposite directions, the angle is 180 degrees. So we're gonna put that into our formula. The magnitude of friction, magnitude of displacement, cosine of 180 degrees. Once again, you can use your calculator and calculate cosine of 180. But if you do that, you're gonna find that this is equal to negative one. So let's simplify our formula now. So the work done by friction is going to be negative the magnitude of friction, magnitude of displacement. And since we're saying magnitude, these two quantities have to be positive. But since there's a negative here, this negative means that the whole work done by friction has to be a number less than zero because it's negative. So that's where we can write this equation has to be less than zero. So this is where we can finally get to the conclusion that there's going to be different cases of work. Some cases work can be greater than zero, which is positive. Other cases work can be 
less than zero, which means it's negative or work can be equal to zero. So now we're gonna make a summary of the three cases and explain what it means to have each of these three cases in terms of energy. Okay, uh, so we calculate the work done, but each of the four forces acting on the tomato as it was moved from its initial position to the final. In other words, there was some kind of displacement. So now we wanna make a quick summary to understand the different cases of work. So there are actually three cases in total. So the first one, when we looked at it, is if the work done by the force equals to zero joules. So what was the situation? Well, in this situation, the normal force was perpendicular to the displacement, or the force of gravity was perpendicular to the displacement. So this work done equals to zero occurs when the force acting on the object is perpendicular to the displacement. Well, if work equals to zero, again, work is a transfer of energy. So how much energy was transferred? Zero joules. So we can say A, force of gravity, you did no work whatsoever, and normal force, you as well did no work. So in this case, no energy is transferred. No energy is transferred by the force. Right, and the two cases was the work done by the normal force and work done by the force of gravity, so you saw that. The second case of work is when work was greater than zero. Right, and when did this occur? When ant was applying a force in the tomato and it got it to move towards the right. So in this case, the force was acting along the direction of displacement. So since it is a number greater than zero, we can say that the force transfers energy. We can be more specific in this. We can say the force adds energy to the tomato. So we can think of it in two different ways. So force adds energy to the tomato. Right, and it is this energy that was transferred to the tomato that makes the tomato actually move. And finally, in the third case, we have the work done less than zero. Now this kind of comes intuitive to you, right? Because what does friction usually try to do to objects? Well, friction tries to make objects slow down. So you can remember that. Well, if friction tries to make objects slow down, in other words, the force is actually taking away energy. So force removes energy from tomato. And again, that makes sense because if we, the object is slowing down due to friction, you can think of it as removing the energy which it has to be moving to begin with. So those are the three cases of work. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you other examples with more challenging questions and not just an ant pushing a tomato.